We're expecting Google to announce the Pixel 4a pretty much any week now, but in the meantime, we have the third and likely final developer preview build of Android 11 before the official beta goes live sometime next month. So we've been playing around with it on the Pixel 4 over the weekend. Here's all of its new features and quirks. So right off the bat, one of the fun new quirks here is you can see the clock and task tray icons are just a little cut off by the rounded corners on the Pixel 4. I guess they didn't really think about that with Developer Preview 3. It's a little annoying, it's not that big a deal, but one of the first real user-facing features here is adjustable sensitivity on the back gesture on both sides of the screen. So if we jump into the system settings here, tap on gestures, scroll all the way down to system navigation and hit this gear, it's a lot of steps I know. Uh, you can see there's now some sensitivity adjustment with both the left and the right edges with that little swipe uh, from either edge to go back gesture. And you can adjust the sensitivity of each side individually. That's really great because maybe you only go back with your left thumb on the left edge of the screen. Well, you can turn that sensitivity really high and bring the sensitivity of the right side down. And you can watch as you mess with this slider, the, uh, the gesture zone sort of expands and contracts accordingly. Another new feature here is the way Android handles screenshots. So you still take them by pressing and holding power and volume down like that. Uh, but now you've got this new screen where you can share or edit. I'm gonna hit edit and you can just quickly crop uh, just like you see on you know, Samsung phones, OnePlus phones, pretty much anything that's not stock Android. I'm really happy about this because most of the time when I take a screenshot, I just wanna crop into a certain spot, maybe this widget and just show the weather and the date, something like that. You know, it's, it's just a really nice feature to have. Now that's not the only area where you can take a screenshot with Android 11. So if you go into the recent apps section, uh, for one, you can see the app preview is much, much larger. It takes up almost the entire screen. Uh, but now there are two buttons down here, one for screenshot and one for share. They both do basically the same thing. So if you tap the screenshot button, it just captures that app. It skips out on the clock information up top. It skips out on the navigation bar at the bottom. You just get the app. And again, you can crop around as you like. If we instead hit share, it just skips that cropping step and just lets you send that screenshot of the app to any app of your choosing. While we're talking about the recent apps window, let's just jump right back in there. There's a new undo gesture that lets you call back an app that you might have accidentally forced closed. So let's just swipe this one away and you can see if you pull down on the next app that pops up, it just comes right back into the system memory. You have to act pretty quickly. You can't uh, wait more than maybe one or two seconds at a time, but if you swipe right down, then it comes just back into the recent apps tray. It's a really great feature. Now, speaking of swiping things away, this is a clean install of Android 11. When you install a developer preview, you generally have to wipe all of your personal info off of the phone, which is what I did. So it's trying to get me to sign into Google Fi and get that all set up, even though I've got that activated on a different phone. Uh, if we swipe that away, that's generally a persistent notification, but now you can get rid of those and they just sort of sit in this really subtle apps active in the background prompt. If you tap on Google Fi, it pops back up with that persistent notification, but this way it just sort of stays out of your way. I really like that for just a cleaner look. And one final new feature in Developer Preview 3 is a toggle to automatically revoke permission settings on an individual per app basis. So if we jump into the system settings again, hit apps, and uh, we can choose any app we want. Let's just do maybe Amex, for example. I'm not signed in, but if I were, uh, you can tap on permissions, and there's this new toggle to auto revoke permissions. What that's gonna do is exactly that. It'll revoke any permissions you've granted the app after a number of months when you haven't opened it. Now, how many months it's gonna take for that to kick in, we don't really know yet, but for those security minded, this is definitely a nice new feature. Okay, so that's pretty much everything new with the latest build of Android 11. Again, there's not a whole lot of user-facing features because it's still just a developer preview, but this does give us some good insight for what the final build of Android 11 will hold. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel, and check out our other videos on previous builds of Android 11. Until next time, stay safe, and thanks for watching.